Has it been six months already? Okay, well, I guess it's time to talk about Ubuntu again. 23.10, codenamed Mantic Minotaur, is either already out or will be in a few hours. And for once, it's a big update to Ubuntu with a lot of cool new features. So without further ado, let's just look at all the changes, plus the changes in all the official flavors. If you're just not a GNOME person, this can happen. So we'll begin with the Ubuntu-specific features. While the desktop will look the same as in 23.04, you will get the whole new Tiling Assistant extension added right out of the box. It expands on the edge tiling that GNOME already brings by letting you do quarter tiling so you have more flexibility in how you organize your workspace. You can simply drag a window to a corner of the screen and it will automatically resize to use a quarter of the available space. Of course, resizing a window will automatically scale all others to adapt. You can also scale a window to use half of your screen's height by dragging it to the bottom edge or to the top edge. This, in my opinion, creates a small usability issue as when you're dragging a window up, you generally want to maximize it, which it will still do if you drop the window fast enough. If you linger a bit too long at the top edge, then it will only be half scaled, which might end up being confusing. When tiling a window to a half of the screen, you will also get a little pop-up showing your currently open apps that could occupy the free space that's left. You're free to either select one or click anywhere else to dismiss that pop-up. Finally, you will get what they call tile groups, meaning that if you tile two windows side by side, when you click one of these windows, the other one will also be placed to the forefront of the display, not just the tiled window you clicked. For example, here I have a floating Nautilus window overlapping two tiled apps. If I click on one of these, both are raised and none are covered by my file manager window. These features are pretty handy. You can disable them altogether if you don't want them from the Ubuntu desktop settings, or you can just disable tile groups, or you can just disable that little pop-up when you have free space that could be filled with another app. I'm not a big fan of the half of the vertical height scaling of the windows, taking the place of the maximize window if you're not fast enough, but maybe that's just me. Now, Ubuntu 23.10 also comes with a brand new Ubuntu App Store called the App Center. Yes, just like in elementary OS, I guess there aren't a hundred ways to name an App Store, so yeah, it's App Center again. It's a really well-designed application made with Flutter, the let's call it official toolkit to build Ubuntu apps. While it is a snap-first app store, it won't stop you from installing apps from the Ubuntu repos, since Debian packages are supported after all. There was some doubt that they would, but they're still here. For how long? Who knows, because the future is definitely snap for Ubuntu, so you better get used to Debian packages taking a backseat more and more. Now, this app is no longer a fork of GNOME software, and it opens blazingly fast now. It handles app installs and uninstalls, plus app updates. Graphically, it looks really nice, with a nice set of categories on the left, although there aren't many of them, with just productivity, development, and games. The list views are nice and fast, the app pages still lack some info though, compared to GNOME software or Discover. You won't get many links to access the code, the documentation, or the help. You don't get release notes, you can't see written reviews, just votes made with thumbs up or down, and you can't see permissions either. Definitely a lot less information than what you would get on a Flatpak first app center like GNOME Software or Discover. I don't know if that's because Snap does not support those features, or if they just didn't want to include them. Also, if an app is available as a snap and as a deb, it will only show you the snap version in the app details. You can still install the Debian package version though when searching for the app. There's a drop down menu in the search results where you can choose to display deb packages instead. Once you've selected that, all your future searches will display Debian packages first until you close the app center, at which point you will have to select Debian packages from the drop down again. In all aspects, this is an upgrade from the bad fork of GNOME software Ubuntu used previously. It looks better, it's much faster, and you don't really lose any options here. 
It is a very good change in my opinion and it doesn't phase out their packages, which I was worried it would. Although, let's all be honest, in the future, snaps will be the only way to get graphical apps on Ubuntu. I don't know how long Debian packages have, but they're going the way of the Dodo at some point. Now, Ubuntu 23.10 also comes with a new firmware updater application, also written using Flutter. It uses the Linux vendor firmware service as a backend, of course, so it's basically just a graphical user interface for the FWUpd daemon. This was previously handled by the Ubuntu App Store, but I think it's better to have a separate app here. And also it's better for performance because you don't have to have the App Store running in the background all the time to check for these updates. It's a simple app, it shows your devices that firmware update can handle, and it will tell you if something has updates available, and it lets you run these updates graphically. And I know that you distro hop basically every month, I, I see you, I know what you did. So yeah, you're gonna have to deal with the Ubuntu installer, so let's talk about that. The installer is still the new one that they introduced recently, and it's still very good looking, fast, and very smooth. But it now defaults to a new install method with just the essentials. You will only get a few system utilities, a web browser, a text editor, an image and PDF viewer, the app store, the file manager, and that's it. If you want the full complement of apps Ubuntu usually ships, then you will have to select the full install option instead. They haven't introduced the new screen that they wanted that would let you pick and choose each app you want to install specifically, so I guess this will be pushed for maybe the next LTS 24.04. There's also a new experimental full disk encryption option that uses the TPM chip of your computer if it has one. It's not the default because, well, it is still experimental and it will not work if you don't have secure boot enabled or proprietary NVIDIA drivers or a TPM 2.0 chip or in certain dual boot cases. The main advantage of this new method is to provide encryption without needing a passphrase to decrypt the computer. The TPM chip will handle the decryption instead. In the future, it will probably be good, better than the traditional encryption that asks you to type something every time you unlock your computer, but for now, I would recommend you don't use it unless you have a spare computer lying around which you don't care about. And of course, Ubuntu 23.10 ships with GNOME 45. I already covered all those changes in a dedicated video, there's a link to it in the description. But still, here is a recap of the main changes that you can enjoy in Ubuntu 23.10. First, the Activities button has been replaced with a Workspaces indicator that shows you how many virtual desktops you have to the left and to the right of the current one. You can also scroll over it to move to the previous or next workspace. Clicking it just brings the activities view like before. Background apps have been improved in the quick settings with the ability to click them to open a window and a little indicator when closing an app. Still in the quick settings, you will get a keyboard backlight toggle that lets you turn that feature on or off or select the brightness level you prefer. And in the panel, you will get a camera indicator when an app is accessing your webcam so you know you're currently being seen by an application. In terms of apps, there's a new split header bar design for apps like Nautilus and the settings, which looks pretty good. And Nautilus gained improved search. It's way faster and there's now a button to search the whole system and not just the directory you're in and its subdirectories. Some people will say that this feature should have been there from the beginning and some people are right. In the settings, you will get a new system dialog with more information about your computer and an easily clickable button to copy all that information. You can close it by pressing escape, just like you now can for every other pop-up dialog in the settings. There's also a new privacy page, better designed, and a few other pages have been touched up. Like with virtually every release of every desktop environment. Like seriously, they cannot leave the settings alone. Finally, the compositor Mutter gained support for YUV color space, so it should handle certain movies and shows much better. And it now has a separate thread to handle the mouse pointer under Wayland, which will result in a lot less lag and input delay, so that's a big improvement. Under the hood, 23.10 will now use a more secure method to add PPAs, and it ships with the Linux kernel 6.5, so you should get the latest hardware support and a bunch of performance improvements. App Armor was improved, now letting you require an App Armor profile to use software that accesses unprivileged user namespaces, 
So it's basically applications that interact with the Linux kernel without requiring root access. This is the source of a lot of security vulnerabilities, so if you need some extra security, you can enable this new feature and all the software that wants to access the kernel interfaces will now need to have an AppArmor profile set up to run. AppArmor being a system that lets you either monitor or restrict what a process can do on your computer. It's basically like SE Linux, but for Ubuntu. Mantic Minotaur will be supported for nine months as it's not an LTS release. So it's only suitable if you don't mind running big upgrades regularly. So this is it for the regular version, the GNOME based version of Ubuntu 23.10. And it's a fantastic release. It's great to see Ubuntu finally moving forward with their own vision for the desktop. It's still GNOME underneath, but they're iterating on it again. And now they have their own apps to support their packaging format and ecosystem. I think it's a good sign to see that Ubuntu is now ready to focus on the desktop again. And if you like Ubuntu, then it's a no brainer update. It's Ubuntu at its best. Now let's look at the flavors. The one with the most changes is Ubuntu Budgie, which updates to Budgie 10.8. This has a new trash applet. There's the new MacPy compositor to better support X11, while Budgie plans its transition to being Wayland only. There's a new dialogue to get super user permissions. There's support for performance profiles in the power applet, plus some theme refinements with a green accent color by default and a lot of smaller changes to the control center, the applets. There's support for Raspberry Pi, more themes being bundled out of the box and more. It's definitely a big update from 23.10, but the major changes to Budgie will probably come with Budgie 11, which is still a long way away and will be Wayland only. Ubuntu Cinnamon moves to Cinnamon 5.8.4, which will give you touchpad and touchscreen gestures with a lot of configuration options for what these can do and how to trigger them. There's the new global dark mode setting. There's better support for desktop portals and Flatpak apps. Although Flatpak is not enabled by default here, as in all Ubuntu flavors. You get the new styles feature, which lets you change the whole theme in one click, plus accent colors for the styles that support it. The tooltips are redesigned and use the accent color now. The file manager performs better at generating thumbnails, and it's now possible to run apps with the dedicated GPU using hybrid graphics systems. It is a great update as well with a bunch of improvements that Linux Mint users have enjoyed for a few months now. Definitely worthwhile to click that upgrade button. For Kubuntu, there's not much new. It's KDE 5.27.8 with Discover and not the new Ubuntu App Store. And you get all the changes under the hood as well. The Wayland session is still not the default here. And of course, Flatpak is not enabled by default. Same for Ubuntu Studio, it uses the same KDE version as Kubuntu, and the only really notable change is the removal of the option to enable the backports PPA at install because it is deprecated for non-LTS releases. Ubuntu Mate is still on Mate 1.26 with the latest bug fixes and improved support for desktop portals. For Ubuntu 23.10, you get the latest XFC 4.18, so nothing changes from 23.04 apart from the kernel and library version changes that Ubuntu 23.10 brings. Finally, Lubuntu 23.10 is also a very light update, moving back to Calamares for the installer, but without any updates to the desktop environment. I couldn't find any info on Ubuntu Unity 23.10 and I did not notice any changes to the desktop from 23.04 while trying out the beta. Although maybe I just missed those changes because I am not the most familiar with Ubuntu Unity these days. So basically for the flavors, there's not much new unless you're a budgie or a cinnamon user. I would expect Kubuntu and Ubuntu Studio to have way bigger releases for 24.04 because this should bring Plasma 6. And I will bring this segue to our sponsor. If you're looking for a new computer, stop looking at devices that come with Windows pre-installed and crossing your fingers to hope that your Linux distro of choice will run perfectly on it. Grab a computer that was made to support Linux from the link in the description from our sponsor, Tuxedo. All my computers are now from Tuxedo. My SteamOS console, which is a Tuxedo Q PC, and my laptop, which is also my editing station, which is an Infinity Book Pro 16. 
Those are amazing, but they have a way bigger range than that. That should cover all your needs and all the price points, from an Ultrabook to a NUC to a giant tower. Whether it's for gaming, for office work, they have it all. All the devices are very customizable. For the laptops, you can even pick your own custom keyboard layout or have your own logo engraved on the lid. And all the laptops can be opened, repaired and upgraded. So if you need a new computer, you want to run Linux, and you want to support Linux's development, because Tuxedo actually contributes patches upstream to fix the various issues they have when they start testing new hardware. Well, if you want all of that, click the link in the description below and buy yourself a PC from Tuxedo. They're really good. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't, there's always that dislike button and you can tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really enjoy the channel, there are plenty of links in the description of the video to support it from LibraPay, PayPal, Patreon, YouTube thanks, YouTube memberships. You know how this works. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.